I'd like to start with the memoirs of a woman who has come to be known as Gluckel of Hamel. She would not have called herself that. Her first name was Gluckel, or Glickel. She was a Jewish woman living in northern Germany, born in the middle of the 17th century. She died in 1724. She would have called herself, probably, Glickel, wife of so-and-so. She had two husbands in her life, or she would have been known by her father's name, Glickel Ba Judah Leib, so Glickel, the daughter of Judah. She was from a middle-class, certainly middle-status Jewish family in Hamburg. She was a person who had great despair involving her children, which is reflected in her work. At midlife, when she was around 50, she decided to write her life story in order to help herself through a difficult patch. She didn't write it, though, for a wider audience. She wrote it for her children and her family. It remained unpublished in Yiddish, the language that German Jews spoke at the time, until the 19th century. So for a century and a half after it had been written, nobody knew about it except her family. In the late 19th century, though, people became very interested in memoirs and autobiographies, and this memoir was discovered. The family, who still had it, recognized that this was a very unusual document from their great-great-grandmother or great-great-aunt, and they looked for an agent to publish it. It was published first in Yiddish and then in English, later in German and many other languages. In, in thinking about personal narratives, you have to ask yourself first, why were they written? What was the person trying to accomplish with this? Western personal narratives, especially those by non-elite authors, and even more rare by women, are often written at the direct order of a religious advisor. An advisor said, you're having a lot of difficulties and you're doubting yourself. What you should do is write down your own relationship with God, your own understanding about religion, your own feelings of how you came to this point in your life. And people took this as not only a chance to reflect on their relationship with God, but also their relationship with their mother, their relationship with how they came to be there, and what was going on in their lives. They have a religious thrust to them, a sense of how I came to be at this kind, be this kind of soul at this point. When we're looking at pre-modern personal narratives, though, we may not be as interested in their souls. We're interested in the side things that the person tells us about daily life in some earlier time. Katerina Schrader, who is literate, decides to keep a daybook of all of her cases of midwifery. She saw more than a hundred cases a year. In the course of her very long career, she saw over 3,000 deliveries. She kept a record of every single one, what happened, who called her, what the situation was. In her early 80s, she figured she was the close of the end of her life and decided to write about her most unusual, most difficult cases. These were often cases of twins or triplets or breech births where the baby was presenting feet first. Katerina Schrader was known as a person who could handle difficult births, so she saw many unusual cases. She was often called when a first midwife was not able to help the mother, when it looked like the mother and child were going to die. In the late 17th century, midwives handled all births from peasants to royalty. 